what we're going to be going over here is the installment sales method and we're going to be looking at an example here where we have installment sales for two years here 20x1 here and 20x2 so what we're going to have to figure out here is the rate of gross profit on these sales that we have here on these installment sales and based on that we're going to have to determine the gross profit recognized here and what we're going to be looking at is how we would record these sales here these installment sales on our balance sheet and on our income statement so first to determine our rate of gross profit so wait we take our looking at year 20x1 here we take our installment sales here for the year here 450,000 we would subtract out the cost of those sales here of 297,000 that would give us a gross profit here of 153,000 so first off to determine our rate of gross profit here for 20x1 sales what we would do here is we're going to take let's look at it down here 153,000 that's our gross profit and then you divide it by the installment sales for the year here 450,000 so that that division here will give us a 34%. So that's the rate of gross profit here on our sales here for year 20x1. Now for 20x2, we go through the same procedure here. We just take our installment sales, in this case uh, 500,000, subtract out our cost of sales, 340,000. So our gross profit here is 160,000. So our rate of gross profit, you simply take, let's go down and look at here, the gross profit 160,000 for the year here, divide it by the installment sales for the year 500,000 thousand and that division is going to give us 32 percent so that's what we our rate of gross profit here for year 20x to 32 percent now the other thing we have to be given here is our cash receipts and we have it broken down here 21 x 20 X1 sales, we're going to have 185,000 here in year 20X1. And also in those 20X1 sales, we're going to receive here cash in year 20X2, 175,000. And then 20X2 sales, we just have uh, what we received here in that year 20X2, 225,000. So now to determine our gross profit realized for each of those years here. So uh, looking first at our uh, 20x1 sales, the 185,000 that we received here in 20x1. Again, what you're going to have to do is you take it times the rate of gross profit here that we have for 20x1, 34%. So uh, what do we have? 185,000 here times 34%. So that gross profit recognized here uh, for uh, those $185,000 sales here is 62,900. Okay, and then the next thing we have to deal with here is the 175,000 of 20x1 sales, the cash re receipts we received here in year 20x2. So taking that 175,000 here in cash receipts here times again 34% here their rate of gross profit because those are those 20x1 sales here cash these are the cash receipts on the 20x1 sales uh, times 34% here uh, times 175,000 that's going to give us 59,500 so that's going to go for our gross profit realized here in uh, year 20x2. And then finally the 225,000 here uh, 20x2 sales uh, you take that here uh, 225,000 times the gross profit rate here for 20x2 32 percent here because and that is going to give us uh, 72,000 here. So for 20x2 here you're going to see we have a total uh, gross profit realized here First for those 20x1 sales here, that 175,000 here times the rate of gross profit uh, based on 20x1, uh, we have the 59,500 here, and then plus the 72,000 here for uh, the year 20, the 20x2 sales here of 225,000. So that's going to give us 131,500. And then for 20x1, the gross profit realized was just that single amount here, 62,900. Okay, so now let's go up and let's look at how we record this. So what we're going to be doing here is we're really going to be recording year 20x2 here to simplify things. So laying out what we have here off our uh, chart that or our uh, calculations that we made previously here we're going to set up here this is what we're going to have we're going to have we're going to go through these account by account here so let's start with our accounts receivable on installment sale so what we would do in this case we would debit that here for five hundred thousand dollars that's for year 20x2 here our sales and 20x2 and then the credit would go to installment sales again on our income statement here for those 20x2 sales credit that here for 500,000 so debit here accounts receivable 500,000 on your balance sheet credit 
installment sales here, 500,000 on the balance sheet. So that's taking care of our sale, recording our sales. So next we have to deal with the cost of sales. So what we would do in this case, we'll just go down here. That Remember, let's look at those cost of sales here was 340,000 here for year 20x2. So going down to our account here, cost of installment sales on the income statement. Remember, this is an expense account here. So uh, what we would do is we debit that here for 340000 That was the cost of sales here. And with that would be coming out of some inventory account here in our balance sheet for purchases. So we would credit or reduce our inventory here by 340000 And then cost of installment sales, debit that here for 340000 Okay, so we've taken care of our accounts receivable on our sales here and also the cost of the installment sales here. Cost on is on our income statement and installment sales sales is on our income statement. So next for our cash receipts, let's just look at them here. So we're again, we're just looking at year 20x2. So we had the 175,000 here uh, received here on 20x1 sales. So we would credit or reduce our accounts receivable here by 175,000. And then on our 20x2 sales, our cash receipts was 225,000. So again, just credit or reduce your accounts receivable here by 225,000. So we reduced our accounts receivable and then our cash collections would be if you just total those up four hundred thousand dollars debit or increase your cash here on your balance sheet for these installment sales four hundred thousand okay so we've taken care of our cash receipts here and setting up our installment sales as an accounts receivable so next let's go down here and this is what we're going to be looking at our year uh, end of year adjustments here so this is what has to be made here and we can look at it in these terms here where we have our sales I'm just breaking a, a, a for 20x2 is what we're looking at here sales 500,000 cost of goods sold 340,000 and gross profit here of 160,000 so what we want to do here in this case is up on our for an installment sales we just want to debit that or close it out we had a credit balance here of 500,000 so end of the year just debit that or close it out here by 500,000 and then our cost of installment sales well we had a debit amount here of 340,000 so what we would do is just credit it out here or reduce our cost of installment sales for 340,000 so our installment sales we've closed that out and our cost of installment sales we've also closed that out remember that's year for year 20x2 but by doing that here this is where we set up our deferred gross profit we could have done that uh, it be in the beginning here but I'm just showing it here now so our deferred deferred gross profit Profit. Remember, that's what I'm showing at here is a, a contra accounts receivable. You check your debits or credits with your accounts receivable, and you're going to be seeing they're different here. It's just so I'm showing it as a contra, a contra accounts receivable. It could be a current liability, the same thing here. But uh, for my purposes here, I'm showing it as a contra account to the accounts receivable. Okay, so what we would have done here. Uh, our gross profit here that we would have had here when we set up this uh, our, for our installment sales would have been difference here. Sales 500,000, cost of goods sold 340, so our gross profit, we would have set that up here as a credit amount here. The difference is 160,000. So credit, deferred uh, uh, gross profit here, 160,000. And I'm showing, showing this on our balance sheet. So the next thing we have to do is, okay, so we've closed out our in sales for the year here. We have closed out our installment sales here and also our cost of our installment sales. And the balancing amount goes into a deferred gross profit here. Uh, again, that could have been set it up initially here, but I'm showing that here as a credit, 160000 Now we have to go and we have to recognize our realized gross profit here for the year here on our income statement. Again, let's just work off what we did earlier here. So we look at our gross profit realized here on those cash uh, cash receipts that we have. So what I'm showing here is what we calculated earlier here. These are our cash receipts here for each of the years and then we take it times the rate of gross profit. We had calculated that out here previously here. So uh, what we would have done here for year 20x2, remember we calculated uh, the 
first amount here um, based on the uh, 20x uh, 20x1 sales that we received in cash here in year 20x2 59,500 so we go up to our deferred gross profit here and debit that or reduce that here by 59,500 and then for these 20x2 uh, cash receipts here in 20x2 sales of 72,000 we'd again do the same thing debit or decrease our deferred gross profit here by 72,000 and then our debit uh, total here would go and it would be the realized gross profit on the sales here again on our income statement so this is what we would have collected here in cash and I mean collected uh, I looked at it I'm just showing it here it would have been uh, cash would have been collected here uh, and this would be the realized gross profit on collections that we have made in cash here so what we had here total amount 159,500 72,000 uh, and uh, excuse me 59,500 plus 72,000 here um, for our uh, gross profit realized for the year here so we debit or decrease our deferred gross profit by that amount here and then we credit or increase our realized gross profit here on the sales here about for that total 131,500 okay so what we've done here is we've broken this um, uh, installment sales method down here uh, and we've this is what we really wanted to concentrate on is how we recognize our real realized gross profit on those sales here for those years so first off we remember we had to set up this deferred gross profit which is a contra accounts receivable or a, a liability account in some fashion here but we set that up here initially here and then as we recognize the gross profit here for the year here uh, based on the sales for each of those years here and the percentage uh, that we had on those say uh, a percentage of gross profit rate here we recognize that as realized gross profit so you just reduce your divert gross profit by whatever you're recognizing here and then you move it over here and you realize it as gross profit here on your income statement okay so that'll take care of our discussion here using this installment sales method